Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this evening's planning application committee meeting. Uh, I'll just start off by um, going through uh, the evacuation procedure and the meeting procedures. Has anyone got a phone on? Is it your laptop? Okay. Okay. Uh, first of all, can I ask that you ensure that you are signed in uh, on the evacuation sheet? If you don't know where that is, it's just right in front of me here, so please make sure you are signed in. A fire drill is not expected this evening, so if the alarm sounds, please evacuate the building quickly and calmly. Please use the stairs and do not use the lifts. Once out of the building, please gather outside the Virgin Money Building Society, um, sorry, it's formerly the Yorkshire Bank, on the opposite side of the road. Exit by the door by which you entered the room or by the fire exits, which are clearly indicated by the standard green fire exit signs. If you need any assistance in evacuating the building, please make yourself known to a member of staff. The meeting is being live streamed and recorded for future publications on the Council's website. Please can I ask that you turn your mobile phones off or to silent for the duration of this meeting. Okay, item number two, apologies. I have two apologies tonight, um, one from Councillor Cape and one from Councillor Smith, who is being substituted for by Councillor Evans. So thank you for joining us, Councillor Evans. Okay, item number three, the minutes of the previous meeting, which were on the 26th of uh, July 2022. Um, could I just ask uh, for a show of hands if we're happy to accept those? Sorry, 26th of August, sorry, not July. Yes. Yeah, so that should be August, not July. Any members? Any got, anyone got any op op issues or objections to anything? Um, okay, so can I sign, are we all happy that I signed the minutes off? Okay, we will amend the date, obviously. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, uh, agenda item number four, declarations of interest. Do any members have any declarations of interest not included on the schedule? Councillor Hartshorn. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, i have still in the process of updating my uh, register of interest to reflect my new workplace. Um, no conflicts with any applications tonight. Okay, thank you. Councillor Evans? Yeah, I, I still need to update my declaration that I've received payments from the Local Government Association for consultancy work that I've done. Okay, but I'm, I'm assuming there's nothing there that will affect anything on tonight. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, if there's no further ones then, um, Item number five, declarations of contact. Do any members have any declarations of contact on any items? Councillor Evans. Thank you. Um, I understand that you're pulling item six from the agenda, uh, but on item uh, number four, he is my local news agent. Um, I get my paper from him daily, and uh, I feel that I am probably, uh, probably would be a bit biased towards this, so I'm not going to vote on the application. Okay, thank you for uh, sharing that with us, Councillor Evans. Much appreciated. Uh, do I have any other members? Yeah, Councillor Shepherd. Thank you, Jane. In terms of ca uh, contact, item number five. I think most members have had something in regard to item five. Cause... Thank you. Okay, thank you. If I've had no further um, items then, uh, we will then move on to the first of our uh, six agenda items tonight. So I shall hand over to uh, our officer, Darren, to start us off on the first one. <clears throat> Thanks, Chair. <clears throat> This application was deferred by members from the previous committee and was site visited earlier by members um, today to assess the impact on visual amenity. The application itself seeks consent for the erection of a two-storey side extension and single-storey rear extension at 58 Copswood Avenue, Nuneaton. The application site is a southeast facing three-bedroom detached two-storey dwelling. The property is set back from the street frontage with a front driveway and is characterised by ready orange brick and some stone cladding detail beneath the windows of the front, to the front of the property. The roof is pitched with a front facing gable. To the side is a carport which extends to the front wall of the property with the extension behind and a flat roof design. The extension is to be two storey to the side, set in half a metre at the ground floor 
and a metre at first floor. In regard to residential immunity, the proposal does not breach the 45 or 60 degree lines from either neighbouring property's habitable original windows and it does not impact the rear of the property at Whitestone Road and all other distance standards are met. In respect of the impact on visual immunity, the proposal ties in well with the existing property and the other houses nearby and it is considered that it will not significantly impact the visual amenities of the area. The application, oh, sorry. the application is therefore recommended for approval as set out on the agenda. Thanks, Chair. Thank you very much for that. We have uh, an objector to this. I think, uh, Philip, you're going to read out these statements. Or oh, Wendy, sorry. Yes, Chair. This is a, a statement from Jackie Stokes. There are discrepancies in the planning officer's recommendations. The application property and two neighbouring properties were all described as detached, but are all link detached. It describes the street as semi-detached houses with some detached dwellings. This is inaccurate, as it mostly consists of detached properties. It states that our side windows are obscurely glazed, but they are not all. The street scene is very different to how it's been described, so the plans will have a bigger impact on the visual amenity than has been suggested. It describes the rear garden as flat and level, but does not include its sunken nature, which increases the overbearing and overlooking issues. The plans are basic and amateur and lack detail, and now has a floating window within. There is no height measurement for the side extension, and the width measurement, which crosses our boundary by seven centimetres, is only shown on the block plan. It was previously included in the original plans, but as another planning officer highlighted, how much it crossed the boundary line has since been removed. If this plan is approved, it will create a precedent. And with this stretch of houses being link detached and repeated through the Whitestone area, it will lead to runs of terraced houses if multiple properties replicate this plan, which is not in keeping with the area or the street scene. This would greatly affect the visual amenity due to there being no separation distance breaching the Council's Sustainable Design and Construction SPD, which states extensions should respect form and size of original buildings. We already consider that we may have to replicate to reduce the negative impact this plan will have on our living conditions. Regarding the residential amenity, the proposed side wall is oppressive, overbearing, obtrusive, and will lead to the entrance to our house being a dark, narrow alleyway. The consideration of other building material for this side wall instead of the proposed brown brick is troublesome, as if this were to be rendered, it would mean that access would be required from our property for maintenance, so we would not be able to extend to our property to allow for this. The first floor side window will also make it impossible for us to build up to our boundary. Likewise, we would not be able to extend over our existing garage space due to the new addition of the rear first floor window, which also very much overlooks our garden, as we are link detached, not detached. The planned side extension will reduce our driveway from two cars to one, meaning that we will have to use on-road parking. And as we live very near to a junction, this is a safety issue for highway users and would further increase if properties replicate this plan, with detrimental impact on highway safety with the local shops and amenities a short distance away. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. We don't have any other speakers on this um, matter. So um, the recommendation before us is to approve planning permissions for reasons as printed. So do I have a proposer? Okay, thank you, Councillor Hartshorn. A seconder? Okay, thank you, Councillor Green. So I will now open uh, the debate for discussion. Do I have any members? Okay, so I, I will leave. So I, I did go on the site visit today. Um, there were was, was several of us who, who were there. Um, having a look at it, I was actually fairly happy with what I saw in terms of the proposals. Um, the gables, there was, there was some, some issues regarding the, sort of the gables in terms of which way we're facing. However, there were down the street as you looked at it, there were some gables facing towards you, some that were 90 degrees um, sort of on the side of the house. So it was very much a mixed 
um, sort of design. I, I appreciate in the row of houses that there's probably four sets of uh, houses where they, they were all alike, but if you just generally looked at the street pattern, um, from what I could see, the houses were all um, sort of, you know, mixed, fairly well mixed. Um, so I don't think this would look out of place necessarily. Um, the only sort of house which was slightly different was one that was on the opposite side of the road, but, um, you know, that was very different. So I think there's already grounds that, um, for me, that we're sort of looking at some sort of mixture of sort of um, housing design. Um, but that said, this would fit in. I think if I was to drive down the road and see this design, I don't think it would look out of place. It's not something that would catch my eye for the wrong reasons. Um, so for that reason, I'm, I'm sort of fairly happy with what I saw. Um, any other members who wish to comment? Okay, so in that case, we'll move to the vote. So all those in favour? Okay, against? Okay, and abstentions? No, okay. So that is, that is carried, thank you. Could we now move on to our second item, please? Thank you, Chair. This application was again deferred for, from the previous committee to allow for a site visit to take place earlier today. The application seeks consent for a single storey extension to the side to form a garage and the relocation of the existing wall to the side. The additional bathroom window to the first floor elevation does not require planning permission. The width and height of the extension is within the realms of permitted development, meaning that it would not normally require permission. However, as it is projecting closer to a highway, it does require consent. The application is being recommended for approval due to it meeting with the relevant sections of the, of the Sustainable Design and Construction SPD and in terms of impact on visual, and visual amenity and highway safety. Oops. The proposed extension blends well with the existing property and will be a small feature in the street. And although on the exposed side of the house, it will not have a, have a significant impact on the visual amenity of the area. The proposed wall is to be moved half a metre closer to the boundary of the application site, meaning that it will be up to Crestwell Close, but will remain entirely within the site ownership of 310A Weddington Road. The wall will be, vi will be visible within this street scene. However, it is considered that as the proposed wall is almost identical to that which exists and is just five, sorry, 0.5 metres closer, um, this will not cause harm to the visual amenities of the area. In regard to the impact on highway safety, in regard to the impact on highway safety, Warwickshire County Council Highways were consulted on the application and provided a statement of no objection. They were reconsulted on the 10th of August following some amendments to the proposed wall and offered no further comments and maintained their stance of no objection. The application is being recommended for approval as set out on the agenda. Thank you very much. So we have um, two speakers on this matter, uh, both in objection. The first one is a statement that's going to be read out by Wendy by, uh, from Councillor Colin Cape. So when you're ready, please, Wendy. Thank you, Chair. Having requested a site visit, I am disappointed that I cannot be there due to an operation. I have carefully reread the application and the comments made against this at the last meeting and really looked at the photographic evidence. It seems to me that if you take the view from the bungalow facing out towards the main road, their amenity will be damaged as instead of a semi-open view, it will be a brick wall. This goes against the whole original planning concept, which historically received acclaim. The extension to the boundary limit will cause a lack of visual amenity to local homeowners and close in the area, changing the whole character. To the major issue of site safety, from the pictures, I can see that there will be an increased likelihood of accidents due to the very nature of the proximity of the wall, lack of lighting and obscuration of the vista. I hope that the committee will take this opinion into account. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. I also have further objections from Mr. Hodgson. Is Mr. Hodgson here tonight? Mr. Hodgson, um, you have three minutes when you're ready. So just press the, the large button on the uh, console in front of you. Well, uh, firstly, I totally agree with the last statement. And I'd like to thank the committee for giving their time and considering our objections, and thank you for the site visit. 
I'm not going to bore you by repeating what I said last time, but I'm disappointed with myself for not making it clear that this application has two elements encompassed into one plan. The garage is not dependent on moving the wall. The garage can be built as a standalone item. This is my last chance to persuade the committee and ask you to separate the garage plan from the repositioning of the wall. Can I suggest to you, you look at them as two items. Each one doesn't need the other to work. The wall is the problem, the garage not so much. It is the wall issue that needs your careful consideration. You've seen the situation today during your visit, and you can see how troublesome it will be, especially when it's dark. The planning department has said it is the perceived perceived loss of manoeuvrability. I live there, I drive out every day. I can assure them the danger is real, certainly not perceived. We will have a wall one side and a garden the other, and it's an insult to say that it's all in the mind. We six pensioners and families do not need this problem. Please consider this point. It's our lives that are affected. No one else is affected at all. We need you to overturn the planning department's perception that everything is okay. It isn't. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Hodgson. Um, so yeah, sorry, can you just turn your microphone off? Just press the large button again. Thank you so much. Okay, so we have a um, recommendation in front of us to, appro to approve planning permission. Do I have a proposer for that? Okay, Councillor Hartshorn and a seconder. Okay, thank you, Councillor Green. Okay, so I'll open the floor for any comments and for the debate. So any members? Okay, do you want to say something, Councillor Hartshorn? Thank you, Chair. Um, I attended the site visit earlier today with yourself and a uh, couple of other members. Um, having seen how far further out the, the wall would move, I believe that's the bone of contention, isn't it? Um, and we, when we were looking at the angles on it, it appeared that it would only affect um, one property down 310, uh, down on Cresswell Close, sorry. Um, and that is the one that's directly on the end of the wall. That, from our perspective, that's what we could see. Um, and uh, sorry, it's it's the wall at the end of three ten A. Is it number four? Number four, yes. Number four, Creswell Close. As far as we can see, that's the only one that moving that wall would potentially impact. But it's. Um, in my personal view, I don't think it would make much difference, having seen it from the perspective of where you would drive out in a car. Um, and the other properties do have clear lines of sight to the main road from um, their driveways. Um, so I, unfortunately, I don't see any reason that we can refuse that application based on the, the argument of the wall itself. Thank you. Um, I, I also attended the, the visit today, um, and, and my observations were fairly similar in that when we were looking at where the wall was going to come out to, which is about another 50 centimetres from where it, its current location is, um, we sort of did try and manoeuvre around there to have a look at what it might be like from a driver's angle, you know, from, from their, their perspective as you, as you might be in a car, sat in a car um, trying to turn out. And, and yes, obviously it will change things, but we didn't think it was going to be a detrimental change particularly. Um, also, the other thing to note is I don't think that uh, road was ever designed to be um, two carriageways. It's a carriageway and a half, so it's, it's kind of always been that. Um, and I think what's happened is where you looks like where you've got the gravel bed next to the wall, I've, I think people have sort of been, if there's two cars coming in opposite directions, people have been sort of parking onto there and pulling over, and that's how you've had this, this situation where you, kind of the traffic has flowed. But sadly, that was never really designed for what I could see to be to accommodate two cars if we just take the road by itself. So people have had the benefit of that extra metre where they can pull over, um, which is a benefit they've enjoyed for a number of years. And now, obviously, they're going to lose 
part of that. So yes, it will make driving conditions slightly more tricky, but this is not the kind of road that you would ever pull out at, at, at speed. You know, anyone who goes down that road is going to be doing sort of, you know, sub five miles per hour um, down it because it's, it's just the nature of that road. So once again, I, I was looking very carefully and, and taking into consideration what you said at, at the previous um, sort of meetings in terms of your objections. But again, I, I was really struggling to sort of see that myself. Um, so for that reason, again, I, I think I'm going to have to vote um, in favour of this proposal this evening. Sorry, do I have any other speakers? Councillor Green. Uh, yes, um, yes, Chair. I'm afraid I'm going to have to agree with you and uh, highways that I didn't see that there was any issue with the flow of traffic. And in view of that, yes, I will be approving this. Okay, any other members? Sorry, Mr. Hodgson, it's, it's not normally the protocol that uh, you're allowed to actually speak or question the committee on anything it's seen. That's not how, sadly, these meetings are. I know you probably wish it was. Uh, I know, you know lots of other people who've been sat where you are do, but I'm sorry, it's not the, the, the format of these meetings where we take... We only have two minutes then, and I just wanted to answer the question that you're talking about driving down, and that's not what we're talking about. That was all. We're not talking about viewing weather. Yeah, so 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 are we. We're not, we're not, we didn't mention Weddington Road once. We mentioned actually within the private road itself. Okay, but we didn't see anything that was going to be, in our opinion, as as yeah, as, as members, as fellow members of the public, we look at that and we view that, and that that was the conclusions that we came up with. You know, and we went in there completely impartially. We're prepared to keep it in mind. That's why we wanted to do the site visit to make sure that you were heard, that you were given the benefit of the doubt. Um, because we didn't want to sort of misinterpret anything. So hence, that's why we turned up. So um, if I don't have any further speakers then, I shall move to vote. So all those in favour of approving the application? Okay, against? And abstentions? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, we will now move on to our third item this evening. Thank you, Chair. This is a Section 73 application to amend the delivery of the signalised Toucan Crossing to the occupation of the 20th dwelling. Planning Committee is recommended to grant planning permission for this application. The, this application relates to an outline application for residential development for up to 360 dwellings, which was subsequently approved. Condition 13 of this application related to the delivery of a signalised toucan crossing. An application, a section 73 application was then applied for to amend the delivery of this crossing prior to the occupation of the first dwelling. This was also approved. As part of this application, the only consideration is the impact on highway safety. The scheme as originally submitted requested the delivery pri be prior to the occupation of the 100th dwelling. Warwickshire County Council Highways objected to this and as such amendments were received. The application is now for the delivery of the crossing prior to the occupation of the 20th dwelling. Upon receiving these amendments, the County Council withdrew their objection. It is therefore considered that the amended condition would not have a detrimental impact on highway safety and is on balance considered to be acceptable and it is for this reason that the application is recommended for approval. Thank you. Thank you very much. I have uh, two speakers on this one. Uh, the first one is an objector, uh, which is um, Mrs. Michelle Condacor. Uh, so Wendy, when you're ready, please, if you mind reading that statement out. Thank you, Chair. It is very disappointing that this application was even submitted. My main concern has always been safety. 
Eastborough Way being a dangerous road to cross due to the speed and volume of traffic. When a previous application for a change of condition was submitted and the signalisation of the roundabout with Heart of England Way, Townsend Drive and Eastborough Way was allowed to be delayed until the occupation of the hundreds home, this was on condition that the Toucan Crossing was to be provided before any homes were occupied. The reason for this was because county highways recognised that there needed to be a safe way of crossing the 40 mile an hour road. This has been known since the outset of the Reserve Matters application, which was approved on the 12th of October 2021, and the provision of the crossing should have been started as soon as building commenced, so that we didn't have this ridiculous situation where, if this is approved this evening, homes will be occupied without a safe place to cross Eastborough Way. If the committee are minded to approve this application, there should be a condition requiring a road safety audit to assess the need for a reduction in the speed limit of Eastborough Way to 30 miles an hour and or the placement of a temporary crossing whilst the works for the permanent crossing are done. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, I also have the applicants, uh, Mr. Simon Harrison from Crest Nicholson. So when you're ready, sir, you have your three minutes. Thank you. Good evening, councillors. Uh, the application to vary condition 13 of the outline of planning approval has come about following discussions with Warwickshire County Council Highways team, which has included detailed negotiations to provide additional power along Eastborough Way to the Toucan Crossing and the lighting on Eastborough Way. This, unfortunately, has delayed the technical approval, although that now has actually been given by Warwickshire County Council. The works to, are to be undertaken by Warwickshire County Council, and this is scheduled to start in January next year. Um, based on the discussions with Warwickshire County Council, as you've heard previously, the original trigger that we requested was for the 100th occupation, but following further discussions, this has now been revised to the 20th occupation to which Warwickshire County Council have agreed to. I urge you to follow the officer's recommendations to grant the approval. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, does anybody need any points of clarification? Councillor Evans. Yeah, could, could I ask, um, if that's the case, why are you only doing it upon delivery of the 20th dwelling that's been built? That's the way I read it. Is that is that right? Yes, the application currently is for delivery of the Toucan Crossing on the um, initial occupation. Because of the delays that we've had through the um, technical approval, that won't be possible to achieve at this time, so therefore it will be possible to achieve the delivery of the Toucan Crossing by the 20th occupation. Okay, Councillor Evans, do you have a follow-up question at all? Um, do any other members require any points of clarification? No? Okay, so we have um, in front of us then a recommendation to grant planning permission subject to conditions as printed. Obviously, we've heard there's been a, a slight sort of change there. Okay, so we've gone from 100 down to uh, 20. Um, so can I ask, um, do I have a proposer and a seconder for this? So thank you. So Councillor Wilson and Councillor Hartshorn to propose and to second. So I'll open this up now for um, discussion. So um, Councillor Hammersley? No, you, you, okay. Do I have any speakers? Councillor Wilson. Uh, thank you, Chair. This falls in my ward. So um, I don't agree with uh, one of the speakers about reducing the, the speed limit on this area of road. Residents don't want to see that. In actual fact, it would probably cause more snarl ups on Eastborough Way than anything else, and it's already a, diffi a difficult road as it is. Sometimes you're lucky to get up to 40 miles per hour during peak time, never mind anything else. Um, I would not have supported um, 100 dwellings because by that point, um, you'd have been looking at moving on towards a third of the site being developed, and that would not have been reasonable with the amount of people who would have been on that site and who would have been my residents um, at that point. However, I do understand the point that there are there can be, particularly with utilities, etc., some difficulties in working things out to be able to put in um, these crossings because there's a lot of stuff under the ground that we don't necessarily see. Um, most of the time we just drive over it or drive near it. We don't see it. Um, so it seems... to that it would actually speed the development up so that instead of having to hold the rest of the development up and causing more disruption to local residents and local users of the area, let's just let them proceed until the 20th, which is a, a reasonable number because there won't be that many people 
on the site and in all, in all likelihood they will probably have vehicles anyway to access and egress to the site. Um, but the residents of Whitestone are going to be having a lot of disruption over the next five to ten years with various different um, uh, sites coming forwards. If we delay the rest of this site coming forwards, it wouldn't be fair on the near neighbours on the Crow Hill estate who are already going to have to put up with uh, that level of disruption. So the quicker we can get it through, the better, in my view. OK, thank you, Councillor Wilson. Do I have any other members? Councillor Shepherd. Thank you, Chair. Unfortunately, I happen to disagree with Councillor Wilson on this one. Um, it came back from amendments from one, then they tried to 100, and now it's back to 20, and it's prior occupation. That could be a year before it, that the house is occupied, depending on, on the current crisis we've got. So that's a, a year left, maybe, possibly, people walking backwards and forwards, dodging the traffic. And I've seen them, even the workers, dodging the traffic there. So it's much for the safety of the workers as the people actually who are going to live there long term. So I can't support this. I think... You just, we just can't keep moving the goalposts every time this development. This is the third time this development's come back in terms of an amendment to something we've said or done. So I think it should be prior to the occupation, not what it says there. I can't, I, I can't agree with that amendment, I'm afraid. OK, any other members? No? In that case, we'll move to the vote. All those in favour of approval... Okay, against and abstentions. No. Okay, so that is carried. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can we move on then when we're ready to the next item on the agenda, please? Thank you, Chair. This is a, planning, a full planning application for the erection of one detached dwelling to the land located to the rear of 50 Hill Street in Bedworth. Planning committee is recommended to refuse planning permission for this application. The key issues for this application are the principle of the development, the impact on residential amenity, the impact on visual amenity, and the impact on highway safety. The full details of these key issues can be found within the report. We are recommending refusal based on four grounds. Firstly, the principle of development. The first reason for refusal is based on the principle of development. This proposal is for a single dwelling on back garden land, which would constitute back land development. The dwelling would not relate well to the character of the street scene and fails to accord with national and local planning policies on such developments. As such, the principle of residential development is not considered to be acceptable. The proposed dwelling would not be in accordance with local policies and guidance with regard to the impact on residential amenity. The dwelling would have a detrimental impact on number 50 Hill Street as well as 20 and 22 Joseph Luckman Road. In addition, the dwelling as proposed does not meet the requirements for appropriate outdoor amenity space to the detriment of future users. The harm on residential amenity is considered to be detrimental and is the second reason for refusal, refusal on this application. The development as proposed would fail to integrate with the pattern of development to the detriment of the street scene and the visual amenity of the area due to its proposed backland location as well as the house type and overall style. The proposal is found not in accordance with both national and local planning policies for this reason and therefore cannot be supported. And finally, the impact on highway safety. Two car parking spaces are proposed with access off Mill Terrace. Plans show the existing drop curb being extended to accommodate the new car parking spaces. Warwickshire County Council have raised concerns with this as vehicles would have to enter and exit the site at an acute angle, potentially conflicting with other road users and pedestrians. The car parking spaces are unusable due to the location of the building line. And finally, the Highway Authority raised an objection to the extension to the drop curb as the existing drop curb is already around 10 metres in length 
and any, any further extension would be considered excessive and would not be supported by them. For these reasons, the impacts on highway safety is considered to be severe, and this constitutes the reason for refusal. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have any speakers on this item, so I'll move straight to the recommendations. Um, so the recommendation before is to refuse planning permission for reasons as printed. Do I have a proposer? For that? Thank you, Councillor Wilson. A seconder? Okay. Uh, thank you, Councillor Hammersley. Okay, I'll open the floor, uh, the, I'll open the, uh, open the debate up to the floor. Any speakers? Councillor Hammersley. Thank you, Chair. It does appear that, that the applicant has, has tried to shoehorn something into a place that is not suitable. Um, and for all the reasons we've been told by highways, it's unsuitable for cars going off in this particular place as well. So for, for, for those reasons, I, I uh, won't, uh, won't be, um, I'll be supporting the non-recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hammersley. Do I have any other members who wish to speak on this matter? Okay, no, I can't see any hands, so we'll go straight to the vote then. So all those in favour of refusing planning permission? Okay, is that uh, against? Okay, and abstentions? Can't, you can't vote yet, okay. Yeah, so that's, that's carried unanimously then, thank you. Okay, that brings us on then to item number five then. Thank you, Chair. This item is an application for prior notification for a 15 metre tele telecommunications monopole with associated equipment. The monopole is obviously the largest element with th three smaller cabinets to be sited on the ground near to the pole. It is to be sited on the land located on the corner of Hospital Lane and Goodyear's End Lane. With, ap applications that with applications such as this, as detailed on the agenda, the council can only consider the sighting and appearance of the proposal. So these are the key issues which need to be assessed in the determination of the, of the prior notification. <clears throat> as set out on the agenda, the appearance of the pole has been designed to be visually as uh, the least visually intrusive as possible for this location. The applicant has accepted that the height will result in a visually intrusive feature, but with the proposed design the, and the minimum height, this has been mitigated acceptably. Some objectors raised that they wished for the monopole, monopole to be camouflaged or look like a tree, but that is not something the council can insist on in this location. Finally, the pole is proposed to be finished in RAL 7035, which is just in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, um, which is considered to be acceptable. The sighting of the mast will be just to the southwest of the auto test centre on this small piece of green verge. The red hashed boxes on the slide here show the highway visibility displays and that these are now met following amended plans from the applicant. In conclusion, the sighting and appearance are acceptable and therefore the recommendation is one of approval as set out on the agenda. Thanks, Chair. Thank you very much. I have um, a couple of speakers who wish to speak in objection plus a reserve speaker should one of them be absent for this. Um, so the first person I have down on my list to speak is uh, Mr. Bradley Ellis. So you have, as last time, your three minutes. Thank you. Thank you. In the previous planning meeting, a similar mass was approved because it was stated the council ran out of time and you would lose on appeal. That is not good enough. This mass should be decided on good planning and if it causes no loss, harm or injury to the public. If this application was heard in court, it would be thrown out before it was even started. Our reference one shows an image of the council website. If a member of the public enters the word hospital lane in your planning search engine, no results are shown for this mast. You are deliberately hiding this proposal from the public. We informed the council about this via email on July 28th. You have not corrected this. We have not received a reply to 33 requests for further information via F Freedom of Information, our reference two, which includes the conflict of interest payment the council will receive from this proposer. 
George Eliot Hospital has received £209,180 for the masts on the maternity building. How much money is the council receiving for this mast? The customers for the MOT centre will see this ugly mast when entering the car park. The nearest parking space is just four metres away. This will impact Tony's business and cause a significant loss based on purely visual appearance and extremely close sighting. Our reference free is a recent court document where the impact of electric fields is shown to cause harm and injury to children that are sensitive to them. So much so that these children are classified as disabled due to electric fields. The introduction of this mass would be far greater than classroom Wi-Fi. Is the council knowingly going to harm disabled children? The UK has 2.4 million people with electrical sensitivity, see our reference four. That works out at 4,644 people in an Eaton and Bedworth. What has the council done to ensure no children in the local area are electrosensitive? Our reference five shows the harm caused by electric fields in 1,670 peer-reviewed scientific papers. This can be found online by visiting helpthechildren.org.uk. To conclude, 5G is a new technology that uses beamforming. This has not been independently tested on humans. Electric fields have been shown in a UK court tribunal to harm children. The court looked at the information from the NHS, PHE, ICNERP, and ruled against these organisations. The court ruled in favour of the overwhelming evidence collected from the scientific community. The application should be deferred until the public gets answers to these concerns. We're also repeating our request for a moratorium on all new 5G telecom infrastructure in the Neat and Bedworth. Finally, the Council's corporate plan called Building a Better Borough states in its first sentence, promote residents' health and wellbeing. So, thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Ellis. Um, I understand that Mr. Gavin, who is our second speaker, is not here. So we'll move to our reserve speaker, Mr. Oh, sorry, is Mr. Gavin here? No. So if he's not, we'll go to our reserve speaker, Mr. Smith. Sorry. I think Councillor Evans may have a point of clarification. Sorry, Councillor Evans. Sorry, I didn't. I can't see your hand for some reason. Don't worry, it's fine. Um, um, Mr. Ellis, um, have you visited the site? Um, so you know that um, well, at least at three o'clock this afternoon, um, there was actually a, um, a statutory notice uh, attached to the site uh, for people walking past. All right, but for the last month, there would have been a statutory notice on there. So um, local residents can, can see and know how to respond to the consultation. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask is, you make reference to something called um, uh, sorry, let me get this right. El electrical sensitivity syndrome. Is this something that's proven by Public Health England? The court um, decided against Public Health England. They ruled against them. Electrical sensitivity is not, um, according to the NHS, PHE and ICNERP, is, is, you know, doesn't even exist. But there's all of these documents and scientists that say it does. 2.4 million people in the UK have electrical sensitivity. That works out about 4,000 of in the Neaton and Bedworth. Okay, we, thank, we, thank we, you. Can I, can I, can I just, can I just hold, hold it there? Because I, I feel I'm getting this deja vu feeling from the previous meeting. Can you just switch your microphone off for me? Thank you. Okay, um, and, and I just want to make it very clear. Um, if we look at paragraph 118 of a national policy planning framework it states and i'll read this out uh, as written local planning authorities must determine applications on planning grounds only they should not seek to prevent competition between different operators question the need for an electronic communication system or set health safeguards different from the international commission guidelines for public exposure okay so what that means is then that you know we, we you could keep presenting this information to us okay but sadly because it falls out of what we're supposed to be considering um and out of our guidelines a lot of it we would not be able to sort of um listen to yes we might have personal sympathies towards some of and a lot of what you're maybe saying but in terms of the weight that it carries here in this um sort of arena um, sadly, it's not. It needs to be sort of planning-based arguments. 
Okay, and what I'm hearing is I'm hearing some very generic information. And I know you've sent out this information also to members as well, because uh, I, I got the, the, the slides and the, uh, well, the three attachments that you sent out, as did all the other members. Um, but again, you know, is, is it really pertinent to this particular application? That's all we can consider. It's got to be pertinent to this application. Okay, so I'm going to ask, I'm going to move on because I've, I've, I've stated my case. And I, so if you want to contact me outside of this meeting, and you want some further clarification, then I will be happy to, to do that. I'm going to go to Mr. Smith, who's our second speaker. Um, so, Mr. Smith, you have your three minutes when you're ready. Please. Um, on the first thing, I'll, I'll try to call a point of order when you try to start on the last minutes off. Yeah, yeah you, you can't call points of order. That's not for members of the public to do. OK, well, I'll, I'll raise that issue now. Um, at the last meeting, this, the last monopole, yeah, Mr. Wilson stipulated the same thing you've just stipulated tonight. Now, I think there's a conflict of interest here with Mr. Wilson having a directorship at transforming Nuneaton, yeah, and Nuneaton Town Investment Plan, who both have, within their remit, rolling out the 5G, yeah? So, should he have spoken? I don't think so. Yeah? Should he declare those interests? Yeah, he should, which he hasn't. Yeah? They're not on his declaration of interests. This council, yeah, you have no head of planning. Not head of planning, you can't get one. You've got no head of finance, you can't get one. Yeah? Why is that? Why is that? Is it so, you're so corrupt that you couldn't employ anyone? Sorry, Mr. Yeah? Smith. Sorry, Mr. Smith, can I just hold you there? Sorry, Councillor Wilson, your point of order. Point of order, Chair, this isn't relevant to anything before us to be considered today. I, I appreciate this. However, I am allowing Mr Smith the courtesy of his three minutes. How he spends that three minutes, Councillor Wilson, is up to him. I'm hoping that we're going to hear something which is relevant, bearing in mind what I've just said about the National Plot Policy Planning Framework, um, paragraph 118. Um, because you, know, you are entitled to your three minutes, so I can't stop you making the points that you want during about three minutes. Um, but if you're trying to aid your cause, then, you know, you need to start making some planning points, Mr. Smith. So please carry on. It is about planning, isn't it? Health and safety, yeah? Health and what you, councillors, yeah? Whether it's planning or not, yeah? Your main concern, yeah, is to serve the people of this borough properly, yeah? And if there is any health and welfare concerns, they should come before any legislation it's only contractual, yeah? <laughs> it's maritime stuff. You say law in your paperwork, yeah? That's the law of the land, not the sea. Yeah, can't get no further from the sea here, right? So let's go by the law of the land, not legislation. You're not ruled by that. You're here to serve the people of this borough. And if their health and welfare is being put, in at, put at risk by other people, you lot should be standing up for us. Yeah? Don't just try and fob us off with, oh, the government said I've got to do that. That ain't good enough. It's not good enough. You're here to represent us. If you're not, we need people in this chamber that are going to look after the welfare of the people of this town. Yeah? You're magicking money up, creating debt for us. Yeah? £150 million pounds worth, which we have to pay off with interest for your harebrained schemes that nobody wants in the town. Yeah? That's planning. That's bad planning, and this council is not representative of the people in this town. It's about time it was. Never mind your legislation, making excuses for yourselves. Represent the people of this borough, or jog on, and we'll get someone else to do it. Thank you. Right, thank you, Mr Smith. Um, as I said, um, none of what you've said is actually relevant to this meeting. It carries no weight um, under planning law and arguments. And I would suggest you think about whether this is the most appropriate forum. There are other types of council meetings where you can have a say, but this is about planning, and I'll remind you about that. This is not about making political statements, and I'm not really going to carry on entertaining more political statements in future. Okay, I'm going to make that very, very clear now because we're here to do to planning. So if you have serious planning concerns and points, then I will happily take them. I've given you the courtesy tonight of listening to you, um, as we all have, okay? But 
what you've just done is not really conducive to um, you know, furthering um, your case in terms of objecting to this particular issue. So with that in mind then, I'm going to ask members, um, do I have a proposer for a recommendation to confirm this? Okay, so Councillor Evans, Councillor Wilson, are you happy to second? Yeah, okay. So do I have any members who wish to speak on this? So I'll take you all to see you, Councillor Wilson and Councillor Evans. Thank you, Chair. For the record, I am not a director of Transforming the Neaton. There is no such thing as a director of Transforming the Neaton. There are working groups and boards of this authority, all of which are declared on uh, the relevant uh, pages of the websites. Um, 5G in this location has no bearing whatsoever on transforming Nuneaton or transforming Bedworth or transforming the world, as far as I, I'm aware, to be quite honest with you. Um, in terms of representation, Chair, I'm willing to bet that each and every single one of us as a councillor has far more votes behind us than any single one of these alleged members of the Nuneaton and Bedworth Community Association. So I think we are perfectly able and willing and duty bound to make a decision on these uh, applications. If they don't like it, they're willing to stand. I'm willing to bet that they won't get very far. But for the moment, we are here and we will do our duty to consider these things. Now, I think Mr. Smith is alluding to a group of people commonly known as freemen of the land uh, with these issues about so-called maritime law versus legislation. As someone who works in uh, the courts, I can tell you, and I'm sure um, Director Richardson will tell you, to be polite, it's a load of codswallop. The law of the land is that which is passed by Parliament with the King now, and, uh, or, and then as it was the Queen, sitting by and with the advice of the Lord Spiritual and Temporal and the House of Commons as assembled. That is the law of this land, not the made-up codswallop that is coming out of the mouths of the people that we're being subjected to, and which is quite frankly lying to the residents of this borough. So let us tell the truth and have some real facts. There are no real facts behind any of this to suggest that this is harmful to any residents at all. There may be some people in extremely, extremely rare circumstances who may have this sensitivity to electricity. But there is no fact whatsoever that has been presented that there are 4,500 people in this borough who would be affected. No fact whatsoever. It is a supposition, and it is, quite frankly, ludicrous to assume that, because there is nothing before us which, which accepts that. And this particular ca legal case which has been quoted is, from what I can tell having read it, very tangential in relation to anything to do with what we have, and having read the facts, and I emphasise the facts, the wavelength that 5G operates isn't in the harmful area that is, uh, is uh, directly harmful to organic tissue. When you get to the X-ray level and, and, that, and that end of the spectrum, then it can be harmful to, uh, to human tissue. But the 5G is not in that range. What we're pr being presented with is a tissue of conspiracy theories and lies. And by the way, Chair, we are not receiving any payments whatsoever beyond the statutory planning application fee for any of these masks which are going up. We get nothing. And I can confirm that as leader of the council, there is nothing coming into the coffers of this authority to do that. So the sooner that people actually recognize what the law of the land says and stop living in cloud cuckoo land, the happier everyone else will be. And I'll be voting for this application, Chair. Okay, thank you, Councillor Wilson. Councillor Evans, you had some points you wish to make. Can we please, though, Councillor Evans, try to just keep them on the planning Can't issues if we can? Councillor Evans, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Chair. And, um, uh, you know, f for what it's worth, if, um, you know, as, as Councillor Wilson uh, stated, you know, I was elected with over 950 votes in my ward. And uh, if someone who stands outside the George Elliott Hospital baby unit wants, who counts radiation figures wants to stand against me, then yes. fine. Sorry, but Councillor in Evans, terms of the application sorry, itself... Point of order. Councillor Shepherd, I'll hear points of order. Go on, sorry. You did say before you started that you want them to yeah. speak to the plan I'm, 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 I'm hoping that Councillor Evans is going to bring it back yeah. on track if we so, can, Councillor Evans. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um so yeah, I mean I'm totally in favour of, of this application. Um at the end of the day, just think about the economic benefits of better five G connectivity 
in Bedworth. And I know this specific part of Bedworth, I mean, this is why they're bringing it to this specific location, because I can tell you now that Councillor Morton and Councillor Singh often get complaints about um, just how bad broadband is on that part of Bedworth Heath. So, well, okay, fine, nonsense. Uh, that, that's your view. The, the other point I will make, Chair, if I may, is... Um, with respect, if 4,000 people in Bedworth Heath were going to be affected by this, um, by this mass, I'm pretty certain, Chair, that um, the CCG, Health Watch, Public Health England, uh, the County Council's health team, the, the hospital, they'd all be sitting in, they would be sitting there today telling us to object to it, and that's not the case. So, um, for what it's worth, if the evidence that Mr. Sorry, Mr. Ellis is quoting, you know, if, if, if he brought a, a genuine scientist who's registered with the GMC uh, to sort of back this up, then I might be able to give it consideration. But at the moment, it's conspiracy theory nonsense. So I support this application. There's no planning reason to vote it down, and it has my absolute full support. Right, thank you, Councillor. Do I, do I have any other members who wish to speak? Councillor Shepherd. I will, Chair, keep to the application. Um, it's, a, it's a query, actually, to Darren as the officer. You said we can't um, agree to camouflage it. Can I ask why? Because surely we could put that in a condition if we so wished. Um, we can use conditions to control uh, certain things, Councillor, and, and realistically that, in this case, would be sort of the finish and paint. Um, so, we, yeah, we could choose a different colour, we could choose a different finish, matte, glossy, that sort of thing. But to actually make it look like a tree or something like that, that's, that's a different proposal, and not one that we're not assessing here. Thanks, so Chair. just just further on to that, Councillor Shepherd, at the last meeting, um, we, we did sort of... Um, discuss this and it's something that councillor smith as uh, within his portfolio will look into because obviously it would make sense um to do that um so what what we sort of discussed was um that we'd ask officers to look at perhaps several different options of camouflage not paint but how we can camouflage um various mass um so they sort of perhaps blend in better and then that would be something that we as a committee could then sort of look at and then we could perhaps work out which is the most suitable option. So that's something that has been mentioned and hopefully we'll start seeing the pipeline um, sort of in the coming sort of weeks and months as we go. So th thank you for your point. I mean, it's a very valid um, point. Who's my next speaker? Uh, sorry, you haven't finished. My apologies, Councillor Shepherd. I obviously needed the clarification from Darren before I move on. So in that case, I am going to move a motion that this mask is painted in a colour that will blend in with the background and i'm saying in terms of i know there's trees up there so you know it could be green because and that includes the cabinets because as a councillor in a ward with loads of telecommunication cabinets around and every member will say to them they are forever getting tagged therefore these are white and it will be even look even worse than it does on the green ones so I would suggest that maybe they need to be green, blend into the background. I'm happy for the, for the officers to discuss the colour, but I think if we wait until Councillor Smith has made a decision, actually we've missed a boat yeah. on this one. What I'll do, Councillor, I will allow other speakers to come and then I'll come back to your motion if that's OK. Uh, do I have any other speakers? Councillor Hammersley and Councillor Markham. Yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, these, these polls, mass do give us a lot of grief, but I'm not here to discuss the, will it, will it fry my brain or not. Uh, purely on the visual appearance of these things, it's contentious because it's, it's uh, 45 feet high. Um, and regards the camouflage, this keeps being brought up again and again, and we have spoken to it. But painting this in my business, I dealt with colours. So, RAL 7035 is a grey. It's not a, it's not a sky blue. And the bottom half, it's not by trees, which is normally RAL 6005, which is another colour to do, which is a green. Uh, but a combination, the best 
camouflage that they're doing for this in one color is not the best, okay? Because it's not in the middle of a lot of trees to paint one color, and it's not, it sticks up, painting it green in a sky blue sky, it sticks out like a smack in the eye. So whoever is, is dictating the colors for these things need a little bit more educating with sky blue is sky blue and there is a RAL or a BS number for it and green is green and there is an RAL or a BS number for that as well. So it could be, it could be the bit that it's in the sky is one colour and the bit that's lower down is another colour and the bit that is, is against a terracotta building and there's another colour. So better planning with colours may help to disguise until we come up with a plan to make it look like a tree, a totem pole, whatever to make it better would be helpful. Thank you, Chair. OK, thank you. Councillor Markham. Thank you. I was only going to mention the colour. I was going to say, why is it grey? Is it because the building behind it is grey? Because some of them are coming forward as green. I just wondered why this one was specifically grey. Um, it's just what was proposed by the applicant. We, we've not specified a colour. It's just what the applicant proposed and essentially the, 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 no real objection to that. Um, just to pick up a point that Councillor Hammersley made, I think having multiple colours I think would be too difficult to condition um, just because it would matter from where you viewed it. So from viewing it from one way, there'd have to be brickwork colour, from the other way, it'd have to be green. I think it'd be a bit too complicated to do by condition anyway. Thanks, Chair. Viewing the site first may help. Now, picking three colours is not difficult, in my opinion, okay? From uh, where's this past must be situated to what the surrounding areas dictate on colours. It's not too difficult. These must cost a fortune, painted in the right colours may help to alleviate some of the problem with the way they look. Okay, we would all like them to look like a Christmas tree, but that is a bone of contention which we may pick up at a later date. But a post is a post. You can try and paint it, it will still be a post. A duck is a duck, as the saying goes. But it's not difficult to paint a post three colours or check with the surroundings to see which colour is prevalent to paint it. Thank you, Chair. OK, thank you, Councillor Hammersley. Yeah, please do. Yeah. Um, I have been to the site. I've been on site, so I know what the site looks like. Um, in my professional opinion, it's very hard to write a condition that, that prescribes what colours to use. So, for example, viewing it like the slide above, you'd have to paint it one colour where the MOT centre is, another colour for the sky. Viewing it from the other angle, there's no buildings behind it, so you'd have to paint it another colour. It would be virtually impossible to write a condition that would, would have that many colours prescribed in it in my professional opinion. Thanks, Chair. Um, thank you, and I hope that clarifies the, the position that uh, the, the planning team have adopted. Um, do I have any other speakers? Because if not, I'll come back to Councillor Shepherd and the motion that she proposed. So uh, you're, you're happy to obviously propose that motion, Councillor Shepherd. So if you'd just like to state clearly for the record what you'd like that motion to be. So that the, the officers and the developer work together to find a suitable shade for the mast and the cabinet that are more of keeping with the surroundings it's going to be sitting in. Okay. Do I have a second for that? <laughs> Councillor Evans, thank you. Okay, um, does anybody wish to speak on that? No, okay, so can we go, oh, sorry, Councillor Hamsley. Yes, I would like to see, see the cabinets green and the post a colour of choice that sort of blends in with the sky as best as possible. Thank you. I mean, I think we're going to have to leave some of that down to the, um, you know, to the officers to sort of look at and to make sort of what they perceive to be the best and most appropriate decisions. Um, I don't think we can necessarily get it out there and, and use our own judgment for every single eventuality from every angle in terms of the colour palette. But I think, you know, a sensible colour palette can hopefully be agreed. Um, so do I have any other speakers on the motion? If not, I will move to the vote. Go on, Councillor Shepherd. What I, all, what I all should, should have added in there was that the 
obviously the developers once that it's up and running that they take care of the equipment because we've had an awful lot of trouble trying to get them back to repaint when it's been vandalized so i think you know if we can tie that into the condition i think that would be useful within the maintenance of it yes. yeah okay right um sorry councillor wilson chair whilst i appreciate the frustration about maintenance i don't see how maintenance is a planning condition i mean we could someone could write to them and say that was what the committee's request but i don't see how it is an enforceable condition I'm going to come back to you, Councillor Shepherd. Are you happy to remove that, that, that part of the motion, just so we can get through at least the colour? I'll move that part, but I think the officers do need to speak to them in terms of what is going to happen when it is tagged, which happens regularly on all our boxes, whether they're going to come back yeah. and repaint it, I, rather, I, I think, than, I think rather this. than this council takes the expense of repainting. That's what's happening at the yeah, I, I think with this, this is a separate issue that perhaps needs to go back to the planning. It's probably not for this chamber at this moment because this is kind of then comes down to policy, and I think we're not here to make policy necessarily in, in our role as the planning applications committee. Okay, so if we're happy to, um, you should still happy, Councillor Evans, to move the original motion. Okay, I've got no other speakers. Um, all those in favour of that original motion regarding finding suitable colour palettes and shades, I think was a word that you used. So, yeah, that's unanimous. Okay. So I'll then go to the um, the main motion then, um, which is to recommend um, approval. So all those in favour of recommending approval of the mass against abstentions. Okay. Thank you very much. And that brings us on then to our final agenda item this evening. Oh, sorry. Yes, I was going to say, with our final agenda item, I don't know why I'm looking at officers, because I, I know this, um, our final agenda item has been withdrawn from this evening's um, uh, document documentation. So we will not be hearing that uh, item. Um, so um, because of that, we'll now end this meeting. So I'll now call this meeting to an end. So, Victoria, when you're ready, if you can end the live stream. <laughs>